are bisexuals real? And if a gay man dates a trans woman, is he still gay? Hello and welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast for those of us over 50 gay men. This season it's all about relationships, and on our last show we discussed the relationship between the gay man and the lesbian, and today we're going to explore all the other letters of the LGBTQ plus moniker. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I am Michael Foley. And how are you doing today, Mr. Foley? I'm exceptional. Okay, well, that I have never heard come out of your mouth. So, <laughs> and what you'll, the you'll never happened? hear it again. I don't know why I even chose that word. <laughs> I'm tired as fuck. Uh, yeah, life's been busy, but great. Good. So, yeah. Busy. How about good. you? What's happening on your end? Uh, well, because I'm a thousand years old, yesterday I went and got my COVID booster, my flu shot, and my RSV shot, and I am really out of it today. It's like, I don't think I should have had all three shots at once, although they said you can. It's like, well, my you can also, are... you, yeah, you could run out in traffic. I, don't, I wouldn't suggest it. Well, okay. Uh, my arms <laughs> what, are what is, me. what is RSV? It's a respiratory respiratory um, kind of flu thing that okay. people over 50 get. So, you know, we have to get all these things. Um, I mean, I'm a healthy guy, but I also, my husband's diabetic. So, we, you know, we want to make sure we take all the precautions yeah. and I'm going to be traveling. So um, all good. I'm just a little bit like, whoa, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it just feels weird. Anyway. Um, so let's get into this little discussion of ours today. Like I said, last show, gays and lesbians, friends or foe, we discussed are gays and lesbians actually friends or are they actually foe? And what we kind of realized was that it depends on the person, you yeah, know? Absolutely. We can't really clump everyone together. However, we're going to try to clump everyone again today, <laughs> and we're going to discuss the over 50 gay males relationship with all the other letters, the B, the T's, the Q's, and the pluses. So let's first start with bisexuals. And I want to read a quote, I have to find it first, um, from The Advocate. They did a study, and this was the finding. Bisexual people are stereotyped as confused or that bisexuality is not a real sexual identity. The majority of mature gay men, and that's us, those of us over 50, do not believe that a man is truly bi. Well, that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, we're not talking about unicorns. We're right? talking about sexuality. And having dated a number of bisexual men in my lifetime, I can tell you with absolute certainty, they exist. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, I think, you know, especially for those of us over 50, it, I, this kind of stems from when we were younger. I don't know about you. And, well, your life is completely different than mine. But, you know, all of us little repressed young men instead of coming out and saying that we're gay right away, everyone was first they were bi, and then they came out as gay. You know, it was kind of that gradual thing. Yeah, it was so incremental. I think, yeah, I think that's why so many gay men over 50 are kind of, yeah, no one's bi, because that was such a thing when we were young. Um, I, I don't quite get it. Um, you don't get the bisexual, or you don't get the attitude of the gay men over 50 who don't think it's a thing? A little bit of both. Um, I mean, I get that, that there are all different types of, you know, colors of this sexuality rainbow. Um, but I, I also don't get why, why it really matters to someone else, you know? Like, okay, if they say they're bi, then fine. Why are you fighting that, you know? Yeah. Um, but people are so busy writing the story of other people that they don't know that 
it takes away from the opportunity for them to actually learn something. And right. to me, that's a little sad. Um, Cause I remember, you know, the first time I did date somebody who said he was bi, I was like, nah. um, but then through conversation and through just spending time with him, it was like, oh, I completely get it. Um, that you can have physical attraction to both sexes and it's okay. And it was interesting because he found what you, that quote that you read at the beginning, that the gay community was so anti-bi and right. he felt he was being ostracized for being who he was. And it's ironic that, you know, we spend our, we've spent our lives feeling that and we're so quick to do it to somebody else oh, because course, we don't right? listen to their story. Well, I think, and, and we'll see this when we talk about all the different letters, but it's, it's a fear of not knowing something that you all of a sudden, I'm not going to like this. I don't, I don't understand it. So I'm, I'm against it. I, I don't like that. Um, another study I found about bisexuality was um, common misconception is that bisexual men are just closeted gay men using bisexuality as their bridge to homosexuality. This was something very funny that I found. Um, it was asking straight people, straight males and females, gay uh, male and females, would you date a bisexual person? And the majority of straight women um, said no, that they would not date a bi man because, first of all, this was so funny, this one woman. First of all, I have to compete with all the women out there for this guy. Now I've got yep. to compete with all the men out there too? No fucking way. It was so awesome. Um, but... You know, uh, I, I have to tell you, that was my, that's why we, we dated, but it was always very casual because I'm like, okay, seriously, it's hard enough to compete with just the guys in the community. I can't, yeah, right? I can't add this whole other field of prospects. You know, it just, it's, it's a little much, it's a little much. Um, so, so I totally get that. I totally get that mentality. When you're out and about out in the, you know, bars and the gay scene that's out there, um, do you run into a number of men who are claiming to be bisexual? Um, in L.A.? Absolutely. In fact, you know, when I do go back to L.A., I, all the time, pretty much yeah. on a regular basis when I'm out and about and circulating. Um, a lot of people, just, you know, consider themselves fluid, which, um, you know, is the new term yeah, for bi or right. pan. Um, here in Palm Springs, not so much, um, just because of the dynamic of the demographic here it tends to be older gay men or just right. gay men it's a you know it's a gay resort town so it's very specific i can't say i've run into a lot of bi men out here and women you, yes men no well again in these studies the bisexual woman everybody loves um you know lesbian women are okay with that the straight men love straight it straight men love it yeah which I don't quite get that either, um, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna sh I want to share a quick story about okay, the, that opposite that. sex and same sex. Th when I first came out, a friend of my mother's asked me if I could get her a gay porn because she wanted to see two guys together. <laughs> and so I got her one, and it was a fairly mild one. Um, and when she gave it back to me, this is when it was on VHS. That's how long ago this was. Um, she was like, oh, my God, it was so cute. I made my husband watch it. And I was like, OK. What? And what, was, what were his thoughts? He was like, he had to get up and leave the room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know? But I guess that's a, that's a thing with you know, heterosexuals being curious about um, that. Well, it's great that she was curious without judgment. Most people. My God, and this are, was in the '80s. Seriously, yeah. think about that. So, how great is that? Yeah. Um, cool. One more question: Do you have any bi friends? I can't say. Well, yes, I do. I have one, um, okay. and it's one of the guys I used to date. Um, we've lost touch, but we always keep in touch over Facebook. Um, so, yeah, I would say yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I just I. My circle is different than yours. I'm, you know, most of our friends are married couples. Um, so I don't really see uh, 
by men out there, especially here, like you said, in Palm Springs. Um, but even in my circles in L.A., I, it was just not something that I saw in people our age and older. It was younger guys all the time. Uh, yeah. Like you said, it's a whole new world out there. Um, all right, let's talk about the the trans world out there and the gay man over 50s relationship with that community. Um, first, I want to read a study. Um, 12% of gay men, 29% of lesbians, and 48% of bisexual, queer, non-binary people say that they would be willing to date a transgender partner. That's bizarre. Only 12% of gay men. Well, uh, um, I, don't, I don't find it bizarre because... Uh, trying to put this tactfully, <laughs> you know, we like penis and taking nothing away from the individual. Um, that's part of what sexually attracts us to somebody that, that sure. physical being. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, so I, I can't say never. But, like, I'm not sure I would be able to date a trans man. Because he's missing that part? Yeah. Yeah. But, I, like I said, I never say never. But, obviously, it's something I've thought about because I've met trans men out here. And they're awesome. And they're great. But, you know, I've had to ask myself that question. Could I date a trans man? And I, I, do, I think if the feeling was there, I would absolutely explore it. Yeah. Um, and just see where it went. Because, you know, we had this conversation early on is if you and I could no longer have sex, we would still be gay men. Right. That there's that physical act that sort of solidifies our sexuality. But if it wasn't there, we would still be gay men. So if, if there was that feeling there, if there was that connection, I would definitely be open to exploring it. Okay. I... I would like you to tell the story. Uh, you and I have a friend who is a trans woman, and uh, our other friend questioned that. I thought that was a great little story. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, can you can you just tell that again? Because that that said so much to me. Um. So a very long time ago, and it, it, it's again because this person never had experience with a trans individual right. or that community. So a friend of ours, a very close friend of ours, um, dated a lot of people who are in the trans community. And when this particular friend found this person and fell in love, there was a question from our other friend who said, so what does that now make Norm? Is he straight? Is he gay? I don't get it. And I said, he's lucky because he found somebody who he fell in love with. Right. And there was, I saw the light bulb go on and it was like, oh, and that was it. That was done. And a conversation, it made sense because right. that's what it's about. And that's exactly what I was referencing when I'm like, I, the door's not shut on dating a trans man. If that connection was there, I would explore it wholeheartedly. Right. I, and I, for me, too, I think that's when the light went on when you were telling that story, because we are, so many of us, especially over 50, are confused by something that we don't know. And, you know, the trans world is something that I don't really know, um, or I didn't know. And so, yeah, that it's a confusing thing. Like, okay, so a gay man is now dating a trans woman, and how does this work? But you just saying that, He's lucky because he found somebody that he loves, that loves him, that, you know, that's the important thing, yeah. right? So, and it just goes to show you, there's, there's those varying degrees in all of us. But if that spark is there, none of the other stuff matters. Right. That it does come down to that basic, it's love. There's, there's an, an inexplicable connection and spark that happens and if you're lucky enough in your life you have it once um and you know if it, 
it, it's a blessing to yeah. have that because you in that moment you understand why they write poems why they write songs and what the whole thing is about everything makes sense and that yeah. is such a blessing and the packaging is really irrelevant in the bigger picture right awesome but i still think that the the issue is especially with mature gay men that if it's new if it's something that they don't understand most gay men that i have known or that i have read about are not willing to put the work into to understand you know and what you just said there is the key they're not willing right and yeah. that is what's really sad yeah because oh my god it's like traveling right the more you travel, the more you want to travel, because the more you learn about different life experiences and different people and different cultures. Um, and to be closed off to learning something new about an entire group of people, you're robbing yourself. You know, you're doing yourself an injustice. Right. And it, it, it makes me sad to see people who are so locked up and, you know, what it comes down to is fear. Um, it always does. I mean... Yeah. Our entire United States culture is that way. I don't understand you. I fear that you're taking who I am away from me, yeah. so fuck you, and I'm not going to deal with this, as opposed to being open to all this stuff. Um, a few other things that I found uh, here, which I thought was kind of um, interesting to me. Uh, trans men are seen more favorably than trans women, even when they seem to contradict a respondent's sexual orientation. Oh, uh, lesbians prefer trans men over trans women. And that was something that we found out through our friend, a lesbian, uh, Jean Marie, right? She told us that there is this whole thing happening in the lesbian world against trans women, which is bizarre isn't it? it it it's and yeah i don't i don't get it again why why close yourself off sit down and have a conversation and and you know you will be stunned at how much you have in common and how little someone else's body parts oh my god matter. right yeah what the fuck do you care what somebody has underneath their clothes and as we discussed in the show gays lesbians friends foe when we work together, we can achieve so many amazing things. And yet so many other people are just cutting themselves off from the experience of learning about yeah. someone new, working with them and creating, you know, these amazing worlds. Yeah. It's and nuts. to hear things like this, it just makes me, I am so unbelievably grateful and feel so blessed to at s such a young age of 18, when I came out to have had exposure to every aspect of our community. It just made me, in my opinion, a more, I became a more full person because I got other perspectives. And I just really hope that at some point in our struggle as a community that we're able to do that and to give that grace to another community and actually extend a hand because we have enough shit coming at us from outside of our community. Right. You know, to, to galvanize and to be. It doesn't matter what your letter is. It doesn't matter what you consider yourself. We are part of the same community. And it should be embraced. And yet, it is not. Uh, and especially, so. you know, again, the more I was reading and asking uh, gentlemen over the age of 50, most of them in their 60s and 70s, because again, we're in Palm Springs, um, <laughs> the, the rest of the letters, the Q plus, right? The, whether Q is for queer or questioning. Uh, we did a show last season just to, you know, we talked a lot about the word queer and how yeah. the younger generation is reclaiming it and, uh, you know, really empowering that word again. But so many older, mature men don't understand this questioning group 
the uh, non-binary genderqueer community, which is huge now. And how great is it that these younger people are not trying to fit themselves into boxes, that they are allowing themselves to be who they are? You know what I wonder in regard to this particular subject, especially from our generation? Huh. Is, is there a sense of jealousy? Because I didn't get to experience this. Is it, could that be part of the... Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Resentment and sort of pushback? Because... I, I'm a little resentful. When I see these young guys walking down the street holding hands or, you know, the young couples with their children, all these things that really we were not allowed to do because of the who we were, the age we were, whatever. I feel a little resentment, but... Not in a negative way. It's like, oh, damn, look how lucky they are, you know, yeah. as opposed to fuck them. I didn't get to do that. Why do they, you know? And I think therein lies the difference between acceptance and, and, and not is that, you know, you go, oh, how lucky are they? And other people are like, fuck them because yeah. I didn't get to do that. You shouldn't right. be able to. Um, yeah, I, I, I've always wondered that. And I should probably ask that question more often. Um, like, what is your resentment to it? Like, yeah. please explain it. Give me the bottom line. What, it, what it, does it bring up in you that you would begrudge somebody else happiness and joy and to live their life fully as themselves? I, I, it just... Well, I think a lot of what I have found is, yes, there is the fear aspect, but then there's also the aspect of, I don't understand it. And I'm not going to take the time to try to learn this. It, you know, the, a lot of people our age and older get stuck in their ways. This is the way life is. I'm not going to step outside of my little world and try to figure something out. So, you know, when they're hearing all about intersex people and non-binary and gender queers and all of those umbrella terms that they kind of just you know, discuss all of these different things people can be now or who they are. It's not that they can be it. It's they are. They're just stepping forward and saying, this is who I am. But I think just not understanding it is really but the you biggest... Can, you could not understand and not resent because oh. I don't understand algebra, but I'm not going <laughs> to resent somebody I who is algebra. really good at it. <laughs> I, I love algebra. algebra. Oh my God, I hated it. <laughs> um, but why would I resent somebody who's capable of doing it and being exceptional at it? Right. I mean, to me, it's that same thing. It's like, so I don't understand it. Who cares? I have two options. I go on with my life and let them be happy with theirs. Or I'll ask questions, which that, that has been my thing since forever. I, I ask questions. And, you know, I always say to somebody, if I'm making you uncomfortable, let me know. And they're like, no, I would rather you ask a question, you know, and, and I have found that to be the rule through my life. Nobody has ever said, yes, you're making me uncomfortable if I'm asking them questions about who they are. I have not. <laughs> me, well, this you're, little you're a very, repressed. Uh... You, that's a whole <laughs> different arena. That's a whole nother show within itself. <laughs> Stop asking me questions. <laughs> I can't. I can't deal with I, this. I don't want to talk about my... No. Um, yeah. So I think people are overjoyed to share and to let other people into their world because they know someone is trying to understand them. Right. And that is honestly a beautiful thing because think about it when somebody does that with you. You know, like way back when, when we came out and people would ask us questions I appreciated that so much more than somebody who just made assumptions. Okay. And I did not. You did I not, I, like, and you still don't. don't yeah, please don't, don't ask me questions. Don't ask, don't, <laughs> ask me who's, don't ask me who's the wife and who's the husband. Which, oh, that's that, that, that question, off, right? oh my Lord have mercy. It's like, yeah, yeah that's, that's your stereotype. That's not ours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but back to this whole gender fluid and um, non-binary, it's really awesome to see these younger people just claiming who they are. I don't, and I, I'm admitting this, I don't fully understand. I, you know, to me, also the whole, 
even the bisexual thing. It's like, yeah, I like men and that's who I want to be with. I don't like women. I don't want to be with them. So I don't, I personally don't understand that, but I'm not putting them down for being who they are. I'm trying to be open and to, you know, embrace how amazing these young people are. I work with so many, as you know, I work with so many young actors and models and the, it, it's just mind blowing to watch them just kind of embrace who they are and stand up in the light and just be like, yeah, this is who I am. I give them so much credit for that. It's amazing. You know, and you know, what's amazing about that. If we look at ourselves as an older community, we gave them that gift. Well, of course. Right. Yeah. So, you know, let them have it. You know, it's, it's not like you don't be an Indian giver. We've, we fought for future generations to be able to do exactly what they're doing. Why, why would you begrudge these younger folks that experience? True that. Um, however, I have to jump back. Grandpa, who said Indian giver. I don't think we're supposed to say those sort of things Oh, anymore. my God. You're right. <laughs> however, you're bringing up something that's... So bad. Yes, I know. Okay. But again, <laughs> it's, it's our mentality. This is how we were raised. Yeah. You know, yes, we have to... It's not like you're saying to me, like, fuck you, I can say whatever I want to say. You're like, oh, you're right. Yes. I have there to are, check that's, myself. That's, yeah. Yeah. Why, that's the totally. thing. Totally. And I'm, I love when people check me because I'm like, oh, my Lord, I can't believe that slipped out of my right. mouth. But it did. Right. You know? And I'm going to... Because usually it goes back to Cher or Barry Manilow with me. Oh, my um, God. When, she, <laughs> when Cher... When Chaz was going through his transition. Okay. You know, Cher did this great interview where she said, I still sometimes refer to him as she or my daughter. And it's just because I've spent my life doing that. So. Right. I should be granted the space for that to be okay. And then to somebody remind me, it's him. Right. And then it's all good because there's a way of doing it and not berating somebody and making them feel like they should feel ashamed because they yeah. just, um, and just as opposed to what you just did to me. We're not, yep, we're not supposed to say that. Mea culpa. Oy vey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but okay. And you accepted it, moved on. Yep. Um, but I do want to, say thanks because you brought up something by using the word Indian. Um, we're living on sacred Indian land right here. This whole non-binary third sex whole thing wasn't just made up. No. You know, this is a historical occurrence over all of the like thousands and millions of years of people. Um, you know, the... The Indian, American Indians had their third sex. The Indian, India Indians have a, have theirs. Um, Egyptians, you know, so, I mean, everybody, yeah. yeah. Every indigenous culture had two-spirited people. Which is then crazy for all these older people or staunch whatever. I, I only believe in male and female people. It's like, look back. Look back in history. They're incapable they didn't make of that. it up. Yeah, they're incapable of that, unfortunately, because of, you know, especially in our culture, the right. game Christianity has played in yeah. making people feel repressed and not being able to embrace both their spiritual side and their sexual side. We, we, we're taught to feel ashamed of our sexual side. So that's where all this stigma and all this other crap just became piled on and you know so we're, we're still dealing with that and hopefully someday we'll be beyond it well hopefully i think what we're doing today is helping the cause you know just by being talking about it and just saying like yeah it's okay not to understand something but don't judge it don't put it down don't you know put it into uh this is a bad category learn about it talk to people like you, you're awesome at just going out there and talking to people and finding out answers to questions that you don't have that answer to. I think that's a brilliant thing about you. Um, but I think Thank more you. people, especially those of us gay men over 50 who are stuck in our little, there's gay people and there's not gay people and that's it. Um, you know, they have to also open up the window and kind of 
Look at all the different colors out there. That's important. Yeah, just open it up and let in a little fresh air. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this is going to lead me into our happy gay moment of the week. My happy gay moment of the week is all about this, the acceptance and being who you are and having the strength to be who you are. I don't know if you've seen this show. It's a Netflix show called Hot Heart Stoppers. Have you watched it? I have. I watched the first season. I haven't gotten into the second okay. season yet. The second season is so great. I really did not want to watch this series because it's about teenagers, and I just feel really weird watching teenagers. But luckily, there's it. this is not a sexual thing at all. They're not all having sex. They're not taking all their clothes off. But the second season I was watching, and every color of this sexual rainbow is there. And these people are in high school, right? So there's the trans female, there is the asexual person, there's the bi, you know, guy, the really cute bi guy, there's the gay guy, there's the gay guy who's hiding his sexuality and, you know, acting out in anger and violence because of it. There are the uh, parents that are accepting, the parents that are not accepting, the parents who then becomes accepting. It's such a brilliant thing to watch all of these people. And in this little group that they have, um, there's like one of everybody. It's so great to watch. They all get along. No one's judging everybody else and saying like, oh, well, you're trans. You can't be friends with us gay people. And I'm gay. You're bi. You can't be part of my group. They're all just so accepting of who they are. And I, I know, oh, well, I don't know, but I'm sure that this was the whole purpose of who wrote this and produced this to show that, yeah, we can all be who we are and just accept who we are. It's the most beautiful, lovely um, series. I'm so glad that I did watch it and got over my high horse of like, I can't watch teenagers, you know, making out. It's too gross. Um so, yeah, I, I would encourage everyone to watch it and just see how how easy it is that we can all just get along just by being whoever we are. They're so supportive of each other. It's amazing. Just so great. Uh, that's, it is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And even the, you know, the cute bi guy um, in real life was outed and kind of really screwed up his life for a little bit. But in the show this season... He comes out as being bi, and he was, you know, one of the football players. And at first, the, you know, straight guys were had a little issue, but then they were like, okay, well, we still like him. He's still a great football player. He's still a great guy. And it's just watching it, it's like, oh, my God, why couldn't life have been like that for us, you know? Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, but I'm so pleased that it is for this young But again, generation. you know what? We did that. Yes, we did. So, God, take take some joy in that 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 because of the the path that we paved this exists now right. and that there are generations of kids who will have struggles you know they have active shooter drills in their school and have for yeah. the last 20 years but they won't struggle with this they won't struggle with who they are and my god what a beautiful thing right well i mean everyone's going to struggle but it's <clears throat> You struggle until you get that acceptance part. But if the, all yeah. the people around you are accepting of people who are different, it's so much easier, which is why we have to set the example, especially those of us over 50 gay men, set the frickin' example for the younger people, you know, um, that it's okay. Be whoever you are. Just be proud of it. Be kind to everybody else. Don't hurt anyone else um, within your struggle. And... Yeah, I think we owe it to everybody. Yes, we opened a lot of doors for people, but we're not done. You no. Know? And, you know, uh, this conversation is a glaring example of how we're not done because of our generation who is so unwilling to bend. Right. And to, to just let other people in our community who are our age be who they are. Right. Uh, again, wh why do you care what goes on yeah. in somebody else's bedroom or what's happening underneath their clothes? Ain't none of your business. But that doesn't mean you can't love and accept that person. Right. Exactly.
So, so, and for those of you that don't quite get it, don't quite get see the importance, join us for our happy gay moment of the week and go on Netflix and watch Heartstoppers and you will see your heart will open. Uh, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, great. Awesome. But uh, not every... And yeah. I, I, I have to stop you because I would love for yeah. us to end on that up note that we were going to do a Savage Side Eye. Okay. Um, for someone who is, you know, the dregs of humanity. <laughs> um, but I think we could save that because... Sure. That was, that was a beautiful share that you did there. And I would love to end it on that and not, you know, this canker sore on... Fantastic. Yeah, I would love to end it on this happy moment. And also to challenge all of these guys out there. We have the best listeners who are always reaching out to us and telling us their stories and, you know, joining our conversations. Well, if you aren't one of those mature gay men who are accepting and open, we're going to challenge you to try to do that. You know, yeah. M Michael... Seems like he came out of the womb open to everything. You know, I was raised a completely different way. So it's taken me, you know, I, I have to wait a minute, check things out, do all my research, talk to people, figure things out. Um, and if that's your, your path, then great. But get on the path, you know. And push yourself to ask a question. Yeah. It really does. It opens up a world that you can't even imagine. And if it's not you, then one of your friends at a dinner party, met, you know, ask, have you seen Heartstoppers? And then that could open the conversation because so many uh, gay couples that I know were watching Heartstoppers. You know, everyone's posting about it on Facebook. Have you seen it? It's so beautiful. Whatever. Great way to start the conversation. Great way, you know. Um, and if they haven't seen it, then you can just start talking about it. And then they're like, oh, I don't understand all that, you know, gender fluid bullshit, whatever. It's like, okay, door is open. Let's start talking. And here's the thing. You don't have to. But there doesn't nope. have to be anything else attached to it. Right. It is what it is, you know. Again, algebra. I'm going to go back to that. <laughs> don't get it. Don't have a desire to get it, but I don't resent it. Good. So there you go. Sex and algebra. Cool. It's all about the math. It's all, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, because then I've been doing it wrong for years. If I'm uh, supposed to be adding things up and, oh, I'm adding though. Um, oh, you got to add. You got to <laughs> add, man. Come on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's leave it at this really happy moment and just kind of, you know, we asked the question in the beginning, are bisexuals real? Of course they are. You know, would you date a trans man? If, if that feeling was there, if the spark is there, that's the important thing. Don't the, shut the door. Right. Right? Right. So... Brilliant. Um, so for all of our great, amazing readers out there, readers, no <laughs> one's reading. <laughs> for all of our great algebra, algebra mathematicians out there, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, where do you stand on this? How are your relationships with the BTQ plus people of our moniker? Um, let us know. Let us know about your friends. Are they open to this younger generation being fluid or not? We want to hear from you. How can they let us know about their lives, Michael? You can find us on Facebook at No Two Gays About It, and that is the number two, Gays About It. And that's the moniker for us across um, the social media platforms. We are also on TikTok and Instagram. And you could hit us up anytime on Gmail at no two gays about it at gmail.com. And again, that's no, the number two, Gays About It. Um, and we love to hear from you and we're, we're, we're very excited when we do hear from you because sometimes it makes us look at things in a different way as well. And that's the point of, you know, our existence. It's just ask questions, be open and learn. Yeah, we want you guys to open up our minds as well. 
you know, is there something we're missing? Is there something we should be talking about? Is there something I should be researching, which I love to do? So yeah, uh -huh. let us know. Fantastic. Tom is all about the research, the math. Tom is all about the math. Exactly, right? That's it. And he, sh he likes to show his work. Because <laughs> it's always right. Um, all right. Thank you very much, Michael, for taking me through this journey. And again, thank you for really opening up my mind just by saying he's lucky. Yeah. He found someone, you know, that he loves, that loves him. That, that for me was like, oh, okay, great. So yeah, thank you for opening up my mind as well. And until our next conversation. Until next time. Thank you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jessica, back there doing all the, the hard work for us. Um, love you. And we will see you next week. See ya. Thank you.